Hi guys, uh, I have here for you the Intel Next Unit of Computing. I'm just going to quickly show you how to open the guy up. It's very, very simple. You flip your unit upside down, you unscrew the four screws in the corners. They're just, they have, I love this design, circular um, little rubber feet with room for the screws. You do not have to take the rubber feet off like you do with some electronics. So it's very easy. They're not on here really tight. Just unscrew, unscrew, unscrew until it feels kind of loose. Almost flush with the top of the rubber foot. You'll notice the whole top's getting loose now. And I'm just going to flip it upside down, kind of wiggle it. Oh. Seems like these two ones need a little bit more coaxing. All right, and we have taken the top, or sorry, the bottom off. The bottom is this piece here. When you're putting it back together, note that the I/O ports have a flat. There's nothing. There's nothing here. There's a, and there's a lip on all the other ends. Uh, except this one here. So you match those two and then they go together really nicely when you want to put it back together. So, Anyways, you can see inside here roughly we have two slots here for RAM. We have two slots here for uh, either an MSATA drive or a Wi-Fi card. Uh, Intel does provide you a list of ones on their website as well as with the product uh, there's a variety of Centrino wireless cards that are approved for use and certified to work with the Intel Next Unit of Computing. Um, first of all, I'm just going to show you here the MSATA. I have some crucial MSATA RAM and I'm just going to install in here. It's very, 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 very simple to install. Uh, first, you, as you may have seen, there's a little screw in the thing that holds the MSATA RAM down. Oops, don't let your heart, <laughs> don't let your screwdriver slip. I have the wrong bit size. Well, I think I would have thought of that before I started making a video. Do 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 do. My... Oh, here we go. Here we go. I used a different screwdriver earlier, of course, when I was uh, assembling one of these units earlier today. So I just flip it this way, it goes in either the top or the bottom. I'm going to use the top because I'm not installing a Wi-Fi card and I want to have it give it good clearance and give it, make sure it doesn't overheat. I lost my screw, guys. Where did it go? Whew. Rough video, rough video. Shake, shake, shake. There we go. That's, that's how I get loose screws out. When I, but I mess things up on video. I'm just putting the screw in place instead of trying to just magically use magnetism. Oh man. Be gentler than I am. I'm not treating my unit too nice here. All right, so we got some Kingston RAM here. Pop that guy open. Don't really care about the packaging or the manual, it's RAM. You slide in here. I want to make sure it's lined up nice. Okay, you shouldn't be you shouldn't be able to see the the metal contacts other than a little bit just a little bit of the edge. And I'll tell you when it clicks in there that it's good. So you see these two little things here. You can release them. It pops up on a spring. They click into place. You know it's in there good. If you're installing the Wi-Fi card, you'll notice that there's. Uh, the two little cables here that plug onto it. It has like an antenna that kind of wraps around it that gives you better Wi-Fi coverage. So right now, this is looking at the bottom of the unit. I'm not gonna fully disassemble it. There is other videos on the interwebs that do show you how to do that. Um, it does have some headers on here. I'm not sure what those are for, uh, but you'll notice some really good things about this. It does use solid capacitors, which means the longevity of this uh, system it is designed with longevity in mind. I mean, all the connections on here are really nicely put together. The HDMI have a, uh, like a sheath over them. Everything's properly shielded and grounded. I really like the design of this case. It has a two-layer two approach. It has the outer structure to it, and as well, it has the inner, uh, just a raw 
I guess raw steel, let's call it. Anyway, so this goes on the flat uh, edge here uh, facing the port, the IO ports, and it just goes back down here and you just tighten your screws. It's a pretty quick process. You know, when you consider we just assembled a whole desktop computer. Though, I mean, some people may not call this a desktop. Some people may call it a nook. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to call this yet. We'll wait to see what the internet, you know, decides that it's called. Part of me, uh, when I see computers like this, I wonder how much longer desktops are really going to be around for. I mean, as someone who's an avid gamer, I mean, I, I really an and, and enthusiast builder, I really enjoy building the systems, but I mean, if one day I can fit all the gaming power I need into a little box like this, I mean, why not? It's really easy to work on, it's really nice to look at, it's uh, not, not intrusive to my desk space. Uh, you'll notice it does have plastic on the top here, so you won't get the best look until you take that off. And I, I don't want to take it off until I've, you know, installed it somewhere. Um, anyway, so that, that's, you know, how, how it is putting in that stuff there. Uh, you know, I'll even quickly show you how the, moni the monitor mount works. Basically, you would attach this plate to a monitor using the screws provided. There's six screws. There's two kind of funky looking screws here. This is the screw for the monitor. This is the screw for the nook. The nook one's a little bit bigger. Basically, you screw in those two into the nook. And, you know, it's kind of like hanging a picture or there's lots of little interlocking things. That you may see these on the back of routers. Sometimes you can wall mount a router. Is uh, you line up the holes, these ones here, with the nook, kind of like where my fingers are here. It's hard to see on camera here, but you kind of pop them through, and then you, and then you slide it. So I'll, I'll do that again. So we line up the holes. Line up the holes there. I'm trying to look at the work while I'm doing it. Line those up and then you slide it in. Line them up, slide it in. And then this would go on the back of your monitor. This this part would already be anchored to the monitor with these uh, four little screws like this. And you're just sliding this, you know, popping it in, sliding it onto the monitor. It's uh, quite easy. And this also allows you to take it off the monitor if you want to, say, use it with a different computer. Um, and it has a handy, uh, this way is up, folks. Because uh, if you put it the other way, gravity will work against you. Uh, when it has those feet on it, uh, sorry, the screws in it, it won't sit nicely. So you don't want to leave those on it if you are using it, especially on a surface. Maybe you don't want to scratch like a table. <laughs> Uh, anyways, that's that's about all I can show you here uh, for installation help. Uh, if you need any more help than that, uh, I, you know maybe you need to learn a little bit more about building computers because this is about the easiest system I have ever put together, ever. Anyways, see you later, folks.